Let's find out the latest from the newest COVID variant that might become problematic, BA 2.75, which was given the name Centaurus, supposedly by someone on Twitter, which I don't know if that's true or not, but regardless, it sounds like a dinosaur. But Centaurus is actually the name of one of the largest constellations in the southern sky, at least according to Wiki. In Greek mythology, Centaurus represents a centaur, a creature that is half human, half horse, kind of like Sagittarius, which I am. So BA 2.75 is half horse, half human, okay? It's spreading quickly, mostly in India right now, but it has been found in at least 10 other countries, including the United States. Right now, the most dominant strain is BA 5, but let's rewind a little bit to understand the subvariants of Omicron. Omicron BA1 that emerged this past winter with major genetic differences. BA1 was quickly followed by BA2. BA1 and BA2 comprised most of the cases this past winter and early spring, with about 1 million cases per day in the United States. BA4, BA5, which are very similar, derive from BA2, as does BA2.75, although independently. There's actually no relation between Omicron BA1 and the other major variants, meaning no relation to alpha, gamma, beta, and delta. BA4 and BA5 are more than capable of reinfecting those with previous COVID infections, including those who've had Omicron, regardless of vaccination status. This is just like those who are infected with Omicron BA1 were susceptible to BA2 and so on. This report indicated that BA5 was about 15-fold more resistant to the monoclonal antibody treatment Evushield and Sotrovimab compared with the previous variants. This resistance, in addition to new mutations, it's likely related to sensitivity to a membrane protease, that TMPRSS2, that's associated with cell membrane infectivity. BA5 could be more similar to the Delta variant that was back in 2021, especially when you consider that BA5 is getting into the lungs on a more frequent basis compared to Omicron. That's why I see a lot of these BA4, BA5 COVID infections with cough, coughing up lots of phlegm. It's getting into the lungs. Compare that to Omicron, not so much. But back to this newest subvariant of Omicron, BA 2.75. On July 7th, the WHO classified it as a variant of concern and it is being monitored closely. It's got a specific group of mutations in its spike protein in addition to those that are found in BA2, BA4, and BA5 and other mutations outside of the spike protein. The spike is the most heavily mutated protein in the Omicron family. There's actually 36 mutations in the spike protein of BA 2.75. Now to put that in perspective, some variants like alpha didn't even have that many in its entire genome. The unique mutations of the BA275 spike protein are located in two regions, the receptor binding domains and the N terminal. The receptor binding domains are the typical targets for neutralizing antibodies. Neutralizing antibodies that come from either vaccines or previous infections or in the form of monoclonal antibody treatments. So when you have mutations in this location, that means there's a higher probability that those antibodies will be rendered useless. This preprint just came out yesterday. In this study, they generated pseudoviruses that harbored the spike proteins of BA275, BA4, and BA5 as well as BA2, and they then evaluated the effectiveness of 10 different monoclonal antibody treatments on them. Now this was a preprint study, but based on these preliminary findings, the authors concluded that three of the monoclonal antibody treatments, regdenvimab, sotrovimab, and tizagevimab, unfortunately did not exhibit antiviral effects against BA2, BA4, and BA5. But the good news is that they did seem to be effective against BA275, which suggests that these antibodies can be used for the treatment and prevention of BA275 infection. But the spike protein mutations, it's not just about its ability to escape antibodies. It also allows the virus to be more transmissible when those mutations promote better binding to the ACE2 protein on our cells. And because of this, and because of the antibody escape, it continues to be a cat and mouse game between our immune system and new COVID variants that keep mutating, that keep evolving. And that's why it's a continuous back and forth of adapting new vaccines that fight these new variants, like the new bivalent vaccine that's expected to battle BA4, BA5, and BA275, likely being made available in the fall or the winter. Now, in addition to BA275, recent reports from India suggest that there are associated lineages BA274 and BA276 that are also circulating right now. So there's more to come.
problem with these variants and the bottom line is COVID isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And with the high circulating numbers right now of BA4, BA5, and the emerging BA275, we know that the risk of getting infected or reinfected remains very high.